to another uh, Tula Pink Butterfly session. Today we're working on flying geese again. So as I told you, we've done the traditional flying geese. I have created for you for uh, this week's set of blocks a foundation paper piece pattern. So hopefully you can see this well. I'm going to send it to you as a PDF. All you need to do is photocopy it, uh, preferably onto foundation paper piece and paper. It's a lighter weight paper, uh, which makes it easier to remove. So it's just kind of a little flimsier. If all you have is copy paper, that works too. Uh, you're just going to work a little harder to get all of the papers out. So uh, if you want to do it the traditional method, uh, just refer back to a couple weeks ago when we did that one where it was just a rectangle and two squares. We made it that way. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. It was just for this session. That might be kind of fun to play with some paper piecing and uh, it might be a little easier for people to try to get nice perfect points. And so what will happen is your paper that looks like this will end up looking like this. Um, and since mine is all different colors up the rainbow, I thought this would be fun. Keep it simple. So the back side's nice and simple. It's that printed side front side is all the fabric. So keep in mind what trips people up with foundation paper piecing is that you are working upside down and backwards. So you have to think that uh, as you're kind of laying your fabric, think of how it's going to look flipped and facing you. So it can trick some people up, but I like the precision in it. Uh, it just definitely makes keeping your points nice and clean easier. You don't have to worry about your quarter inch seam and all those kinds of things because you're sewing directly on the line. So if you've never done foundation paper piecing, things to know. You are just going to sew directly on the lines. On the printed side, your fabric's going to be on the back non-printed side and I'll show you how to do this. Uh, make sure when you go to your sewing machine you reduce your stitch count. I've dropped mine down to about a two. I'm normally at a 2.5. That makes it easier to remove the paper in the end. Um, I definitely make sure I have a nice sharp needle in there to get nice precise stitches in the paper. Uh, it's, it just makes a cleaner stitch. So new needle, drop that stitch length. You can use your regular cotton 50 weight. Uh, some people use a polyester, a little lighter weight, so there's less bulk as you're going. Uh, that's a good recommendation too, but whatever you have on hand works. Now keep in mind for this, I did change the measurements of what I cut my fabric at, so I didn't have to worry about making sure everything was lined up just so. And because we're doing it a little differently than the traditional method, uh, what I'm going to tell you is that I used for the main body, which is uh, the triangle portion, I call that the body of the geese. That piece I did uh, three inch by four and a half, actually five. I, I bumped mine up because it's going to be four and a half when it's done. And I like just to have some extra space for oops. So I would do it three by five, just so you don't have to worry. Uh, and then for these triangle units, I actually, I left it at three just so I could cut kind of three inch strips uh, and keep it all uniform in my measurement because I like cutting full strips. Uh, so I did three by four and that gives you more than enough room so you don't have to worry about um, if it's off a little bit. You have plenty for trimming and keeping it uh, within the lines. So foundation piecing it's going to do a lot of that work for that seam uh, for you as you go, which is kind of nice. And I'm going to show you the basics. Uh, so if you've never done foundation paper piecing, we're going to do it today. Some of the tricks to remember that throw people off in the beginning is that very first one you want to have um, facing outward. So when you start, and of course, I'm missing my rectangle. When you start, this printed side is what you're sewing on. Your fabric, the print side, is going to be facing outward or down. So if it's on the table, what I say is you put the print side down. You put the paper with what I call the wrong side, the non-printed side, to the wrong side of your print facing down. 
and have it. I'm going to move the camera so you can see what's going on because we really don't care what the eye look like at this point. So we're going to have it this way. So print side down. Okay. Wrong side to wrong side, and you want that print facing you. A lot of times I use the trick of, say, a light box, a window, or even uh, the sewing machine light. I can kind of hold it up to some light. You're probably not going to be able to tell with the camera. Yeah, really, you kind of can. You can see it right in here. You can see kind of the difference between the dark and the light. That's the fabric behind it. You're just making sure you're fabric is covering all the space you need. So since this is the bottom rectangle, we need it to cover all the way of this rectangle. So that's why a lot of times holding it up to some light so you can see through and make sure that it hasn't twisted because you sure don't want it not where it belongs. And I always pin that first piece. So I lay it down, I line it up. Where I'm not sewing is where I pin. So this center triangle, take a flat flower pin, you flat pins are better uh, because they don't have that lump and will lay flatter for you so you don't have to worry about a little bit extra. I try to keep it within where I'm going to sew so I do not accidentally sew over this head. Okay so keeping within that triangle for that pin is how you want it to be and then I can hold it up. I can test it and go okay am I within all my lines or actually outside all my lines not within you want to make sure it's outside all your lines. And that's why I told you to cut bigger. Okay. So you're going to do that. And then if you have what we call an add a quarter, highly recommended uh, for foundation piecing. What's nice, uh, especially if you get the one that's called add a quarter plus, they come in different lengths. This is a shorter one. I have both of them. They're nice to have. Uh, there is a lip. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. But down here, there's a quarter inch lip. You can kind of see that my nail's catching on it here. And that's going to line up against your seam. And I'll show you how it goes. But uh, the other end of it is kind of a beveled edge, uh, which is what I'm going to use right here. So this beveled edge, I'm laying on this line. This is my first sew line. And I have them numbered for you. Uh, my printout, <laughs> I printed it before uh, numbering it for you guys. So mine doesn't have the numbers. Uh, but I have it numbered for you. So you're just going to go in session. One to two. We're going to fold over on that line. Fold it all the way. We don't care what happens to this paper in the end. We're going to take it out and throw it away when we're done. But until we're done, leave it in there. And then what you do is you take the beveled edge of your add a quarter and just snug it up right against that fold and trim. Okay, so what I call this when I teach uh, my other foundation classes is I'm preparing to sew. So I'm giving myself my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm getting it all prepared for my piece. Okay, now remember, this is what really throws everybody off. So this piece, it's facing up at me. That's how it's going to look when I'm done. Okay, now if you don't have an out of quarter, you can use, I'll grab my regular ruler especially if you have a creative grid and it's got the quarter inch, you can pretend and you can just line up your quarter inch line on the fold and trim. Okay. So if you don't have quarter, the add a quarter, you can use a regular ruler. Uh, the only difference is this can shift on you where the, the nice lip on this one just snugs up and you can't really slide it past that fold. So there are some pluses to that. And then what happens is you'll take, your first fabric that you want for the triangle, which is going to be this guy here. We're going to lay it right sides down. So just like when you're quilting, you want your right sides together because what's going to happen is you're going to sew it and then you're going to flip it open. Okay. So I'm just going to take it to the machine. I'm going to line it up here. If you have problems of this piece shifting on you, which can happen, uh, just pin it. Don't worry about adding extra pins um, as long as they're not in the way of your seam. So I could pin it down here through all three pieces uh, so that this doesn't go anywhere because sometimes it does like to try to shift because we're going to flip it 
and take it to the machine. So let me see. Let's see if we can travel. Hopefully I don't make anybody nauseous. I'm going to come to our machine. Unfortunately, I'm sure you can't see very well. But I'm going to take it right up. And I'm going to sew on my solid line. Now I can, now that everything's flipped, a lot of times I'll pull a pin out, get it out of my way so I don't stick myself. Uh, one of the pluses of my machine is my freehand system. So I can move my foot up and down with my knee. My hands are right here. My favorite feature of this machine is that freehand system. That I can move this foot up and down uh, and shift around all I need with my hands here and not have to worry about it. Put my foot down. I'm starting at the top. Now, ideally with this, it really doesn't matter. I can start at the bottom of my goose or I can start at the center point. It doesn't matter. It's not going to make a difference. So for me, I'm just feeling like I want to start dead center. And I'm going to stitch just from one end to the other and stop. And cut it. We're good. Okay. You may also notice, let's see if I can get this, I've got glare going on. We'll shift you back. I'm trying to do it this way, it's not always easy. You may notice once you see the, the PDF and you print it, I've already given you a quarter inch seam allowance for your finished product. You don't need to stitch past. You don't have to go all the way out here. You can, it's not going to hurt anything, but I stopped right where that corner meets. I did one little stitch beyond if you're worried about it popping up. You can go a stitch beyond. You can back stitch if you're super worried. I don't worry about it. It all seems to get sucked up in the end. So I, I don't fuss much about it. Um, but you may take classes from other people and they may tell you to back stitch both sides, all those kinds of things. Whatever you're comfortable with, I leave that up to you guys. Um, so otherwise, we're just gonna flip it open. And then you can finger press it. You can do uh, do a hot dry iron. Turn your steam off if you're going to iron it. Because this is paper. This paper likes to warp if you steam it too much. Um, it won't kill it, but it just makes it a little harder to keep everything nice and clean. So to see, this is what your backside looks like. I like to clip my threads because they bug me. Um, so I've just done my seam. And you can always hold it up to the light and go, okay, yeah, and you can't tell from here. Uh, just make sure that full triangle is covered. So if you hold it up and that triangle, for whatever reason, is not fully covered by fabric, you need to stop, take it out, and try it again. Because um, you just want to make sure that this full triangle uh, is covered with fabric or you're going to have issues down the road. And then we're just going to keep going. So then line... I'll number them so you, you know what I'm talking about. So the bottom is number one, two, three, four. We'll get that far. Then you'll know what you're doing. So I've done one and two. I'm now hopping over to three. So hopefully you can get your maybe a little closer. So beveled edge on line three, right on it. Hold your paper, put your beveled edge right on the fold, and trim all this excess. If you forget this step, which is common when you're first learning, I see it a lot, uh, you end up with all that excess underneath. You try to sew the next piece on, the next piece doesn't line up correctly, um, you have all that bulk underneath, so you definitely want to not forget to clean up and create your quarter inch seam. Um, yeah, Diane, I'm with you. I like to press, just keeps it nice and flat uh, and clean. Now we can go back and open it back up because we need to add on our fabric for number three. That has not been done yet. So all I've done is cleaned up that nice, pretty straight line. And then I'm going to line it up. This is where it's nice if you have a light because you can then see underneath the triangle and where it needs to be lined up. So. Make sure you're just holding it up to the light on your machine. Uh, like I said, if you've got a light box, anything, 
because um, you're not going to be able to tell from this camera. Um, but I have it lined up so that once I sew that quarter inch, and I can even pretend, I just stick my fingers and I do a little flip and go, oh, is it going to cover my triangle? Yes, then I'm good. And once again, if you want to pin so that between here and the sewing machine, it doesn't go anywhere, just stick a pin in it. Just make sure it's away from where you're going to sew. We're going to flip it again. And then I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm just going to sew on this line for number three. Okay. Pretty simple. Uh, if you have a Bernina, uh, the, what is it? The 34 foot, I'll show you. I forgot to switch it. I love this foot. So this foot, we'll get super close if we can, has a line in it. Let's see if you can see that line. What's nice with this foot is it's clear so you can see in that line you can use to line up on your foundation paper for your stitch line. So this is a great foot to have that you just swap out because you don't need your quarter inch because you're just sewing on the line. You don't care if it's quarter, eighth, three eighths, whatever. Uh, you're just wanting to make sure you're on straight on that line. So this is a nice one. You can use that line as a guide and it's clear so you can see where it's going and where you're headed. So definitely recommend this foot. Uh, but I'm, of course, winging it without it. But it's by far my favorite. And then, should we tell? We're going to flip it open. We have the beginning of a flying geese. Okay, I'm going to press it real quick. And like I said, hot dry iron. So nice and flat. And there's my nice point. And we'll show you how it's going to look with the next step. So we flip it back over. Haha, <laughs> look, I used my friction pen, my numbers went away. I love friction, except for in this scenario. So there we go. One, two, three, four. So we've got the makings of the first flying geese. We're going to start the makings of the second, trim that thread because it bugs me. Same step. And so you're just going to keep repeating this. You're just going to keep folding on the next line, trimming away that quarter inch. Of excess. And then adding the next piece. So I've trimmed, I have my quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to take my next piece here. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to take it, flip it, because remember we're sewing on the print side, and stitch. Okay? And so you just keep going up the chain. So that's all we're doing is just keep going up the chain. Uh, I, of course, skipped the bottom one because I apparently don't have this piece floating around. So I started here with that color. And as you're going to see, I'm going to flip. I used the wrong fabric because that's how my day's going. Oh, it's Friday. This really should be this fabric. But you get a better view of how this V will now look. You get that nice crisp point. You have your triangles, and then this is the next geese. And you just keep going. Uh, hey, Millie, yep, I'm going to send you this template. So uh, you'll be getting it after I do this video because I wanted to send it uh, once I get the YouTube link going and just get everybody uh, the video link and the PDF all at once. And so you just iron again and keep going. So you then just flip, trim. Just keep chugging along through the entire thing. So, okay. Once you're done with the... In <laughs> My camera wants to run away. It's a fun Friday for me. Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> or we'll be crooked today. <sighs> it's that kind of day. Um, once you get through the entire strata and it's all done, 
then you're going to trim okay and remember i gave you that quarter inch so make sure you trim on the outside leave that quarter inch this one is four and a half by ten and a half when it's done so if anything use your ruler make sure it's four and a half by ten and a half when you're done and that's the size you need and i did make note of that on the template okay so you can use this template for uh, page eight flying geese number one you just need to make two of these in matching sets okay so the same colors uh, both of them should match whether it's two color like the pattern or you do like mine where it's a full rainbow of color whatever you choose based off of your color diagram because this one is going to go oh, let's see if I can find it for you because I'm upside down and backwards here um, kind of in the center here of each side of the wing it's in the middle okay then you'll be able to use this same template for uh, page nine flying geese number two so what's really nice is it's also useful to make the full uh, running flying geese down the middle of the butterfly but you'll need four copies to make that whole flying geese and if you're doing it rainbow like mine you need 19 colors okay because you're gonna make 19 geese and so what that will look like is you'll have four like this dropping okay and what you will then connect them so it's nice that it kind of broke down that way makes it really simple so then you can just rainbow i so just remember when you do the full center flying geese flying geese number two when you do that whole center section the very first one is your background and the very last two triangles are your background the rest is all your rainbow and so i set all my fabrics out and made a rainbow of 19 fabrics on my table before i cut them and then i cut and stacked them in order so that i didn't lose track and then what happens is you're going to combine them so what's really nice is you can take two foundation papers and sew them together so uh, i will show you how that goes i'm backwards telling you it's a rough Friday uh, so what I'm going to do is make sure they're matching which I have them matching now you place them right sides together line up your edge I'm going to take it to the machine and what's nice is I already have my quarter inch so really I can just sew on the line but you do want to sew all the way from end to end so even though this line doesn't go straight through you want to for this just sew all the way end to end to join these two sets of strips together so i'll show you what it looks like in the end because this is going to go in the middle between two sets of wings let's wait for that cutter to be done cut my threads and then voila I now have it joined it's in the back I press open and I also I pull out these just the quarter inch extra paper I pull that out one of the tricks for pulling out papers when you're ready to pull them out is a lot of times I will score them with a stiletto and uh, <laughs> yeah Debbie it's Friday the 13th that explains a lot that should teach me. I should never try to do live on Friday the 13th. So I just take quarter inch out. <laughs> We're making it to the end, people. We got this. Um, just pull these quarter inch papers out so that when you press, uh, there's less bulk and they just, they don't need to be in there. They're going to come out in the end before uh, you quilt your quilt. But until I actually put the wings to this centerpiece, I'm going to keep all the papers in it just adds that extra stability in the whole process so then once you're done you pull them out and you press them nice and flat open um, and just like this one's been joined and you just really can't tell that you've joined them once it's all done so 
once you get to this point, you're going to sew all four of them together. So like this one, I'll then sew again, and it'll be one big, long rainbow strata. And it just makes me happy. These colors are just fabulous. I love it. Um, so that's how you join them. Don't worry about um, seam allowance. Like I said, that's the plus of this. Uh, just focus on sewing on the line and making sure your fabric is covering all of the sections. And just remember once you're done and you're trimming that you do not trim the inside line you're keeping on the outside. You're keeping it at the four and a half by ten and a half for that strata uh, so that it will fit properly. Uh, if you have an issue, um, reach out to me. Keep in mind there is some forgiveness for foundation piecing. So if you happen to trim, like if I had accidentally trimmed this seam just a little too skinny, it's okay. If it's not a full quarter inch, it's okay because it's, it's sewn, there's enough. And once again, because we don't have to worry about seam allowance keeping it straight because your stitch lines are keeping it straight. Um, nobody's gonna know that you have just a skosh too much, a skosh not enough. Um, as long as you have at least an eighth or a healthy eighth, you're good. Just keep on going um, and just don't stress over it. Don't get super OCD over it. I know those of you are out there. Don't let it freak you out. Uh, if you get into doing this and it just, you struggle with it, uh, let me know. Reach out to me. We can do kind of a live session together and I can walk you through it. You know, I've taught it virtually uh, for other classes, so I have no problem just, we can do one-on-one -on -one and walk you through it. Um, and I think once you get through one strata, the rest are breeze, because the rest are all the same. It's just really remembering that very first piece is face up, that very bottom first triangle. Remember, it needs to be outward or as I, you know, so you have your wrong sides to wrong sides. And then everything else is gonna be face down, just like quilting. You're gonna put those two pieces of fabric right sides together as you go along. That very first one is just the one you have to remember that that's gonna be the one outward because once you're looking at it this way, it's facing out. Don't have it facing the paper. If you have it facing the paper, you're not gonna see the part of the fabric that you want to see. So always make sure it's away from the paper that's usually the one thing people forget and it just becomes a stickler at the beginning of going oh wait which way where so remember you don't want your fabric facing the paper and then you just treat it like quilting right sides together uh, i think i've covered everything for you guys i'll go hop in a chat room for you um watch the video again and again as you're trying to sew and then if it just it's making your head hurt just reach out to me or go back to traditional if you just want to do traditional and this just freaks you out, that's okay too. This is just an alternate option. Um, I really just kind of liked it because it does, it makes it precise. I don't have to worry about if I have that quarter inch at the top of the geese or not because the paper keeps it there. It just keeps it clean. So it's just an alternate option. You don't have to do it. I'm not grading you on it. I'm not the quilt police again. Remember, you do it how it makes you happy. It, it's what makes you happy, okay? So don't worry about what I'm gonna think. It's all about getting it done for you. So um, otherwise, have a great Friday, guys. Friday the 13th, hopefully it goes better for you than it does for me, all right? Happy stitching. <laughs>